Greetings this Wednesday morning of Easter week. We gather for prayer and devotion here at St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Fairport, New York. My name is Ken Pepin. I'm the rector here and uh, delighted that you could come and share with us this day. Um, as you see, we are still in the in the celebration of our Easter season, as these beautiful flowers represent. And um, hopefully that we all are experiencing that, uh, that spring uh, occasion. So let us turn our hearts and minds to God this morning um, as we pray. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Our psalm this morning is psalm, psalm number 97. The Lord is king. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies on every side. His lightnings light up the world, and the earth sees it and is afraid. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord, the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness, and all the people see his glory. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Bow down before him, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad, and the cities of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you are the Lord most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves just. The Lord, loves, the Lord loves those who hate evil. He preserves the lives of his saints and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light has sprung up for the righteous and joyful gladness for those who are true hearted. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to God's holy name. Our scripture passage is a continuation of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And a man lame from birth was being carried in. People would lay him daily at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate, so that he could ask for alms from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. And Peter looked intently at him and did John and said, Look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God, and they recognized him as the one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement 
and what had happened to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Such miraculous wonders, such stories, such examples of the power of God in our life um, leaves us all sort of, again, amazed, perhaps just like the crowd. Perhaps we think of, well, why didn't it happen to me? <laughs> why wasn't this miraculous event uh, take care of my issues or my problems or my worries. The beauty of a, a miracle, again, is that sense of, of faith, that, that nothing um, it comes as grace, it comes as uh, unexpected, it comes as, as if um, without being deserved. Um, you think of this man who was, who was obviously lame for for most of his life each and every you know week they'd go in and, and place him there to to beg and to seek mercy from his his neighbors and just out of the blue with no expectation he's healed Some of us might think, well, gee, that doesn't seem very, very uh, just, or it may not seem very fair. Um, and yet when we deal with, with God's grace, it's, it's not about our fairness. It's not about, um, again, whether we deserved it or not. It's about God's generous love, God's great gift of love to us. So wherever we might be, whether we're in a, circumstances that are in need, or whether we are one of those people that walk by um, opportunities, uh, people that we know that by our time, by our attention, by our love, by our taking that moment out to reach out to them can make a huge world of difference. Sometimes it's, uh, it's, it's those occasions, again, where we we can just be, just relish in, in the glorious power of God working through us without our even ex expecting it. <laughs> it happens. The joy of this season of Easter is the opportunity to refocus ourselves, to become more attentive to the grace that is all around us, the opportunities for God's power of love to take hold and to make a difference in our world. So let us turn to our prayer and again bring to prayer those who by our prayers, by our efforts, by our taking the time out to think about these people um, make a huge difference in orienting our own souls, our own hearts to to be attentive, to be more loving. For in peace we pray to you, Lord God. We pray for all people in their daily life and their work, for our families, our friends, our neighbors, and for those especially who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, for freedom, and for peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. And for all who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy the peace and unity of the Church of God, and for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth, for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Prince, our bishop, for all who minister in God's name, for all who are vehicles of God's great love, for the special needs and concerns of all of us, 
whatever they might be, to invite God into our hearts and lives. And we thank you, God, for all the blessings of our life, for all the wonderful ways that you enter into our lives and give us hope. We exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon us. We pray for those who have gone before us in faith, those who've been witnesses and given us testimony of the faith, uh, who've paved the way for us that our walk might be smoother. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord God Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity, but in all we do direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ our Lord. May God bless you this day, fill your hearts with his love, strengthen you in all that you do, and open your heart to those who, by your grace, by your time, by your attention, can, uh, can experience the very love of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Have a great day.